as a brief follow-up to my last video, because it would have made the previous one too long and unwieldy, I'm going to share a little bit of um, a Claudine Gay's doctoral thesis, or at least a preview of it. I, it'll be impolite to share the whole thing, um, but the preview of section of it can be found publicly. Here we are. Taking charge, black electoral success of the redefinition of American politics. Gay Claudine, Harvard University, Procrest Dissertations, published in 1997. Procrest is, as some of you are probably watching, knows one of those storage solutions you get that you'll find whenever you log into universities. You'll notice I'm logged into a certain university's library here and doing it that way. Information to my users, blah, 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 blah. You'll find similar stuff on this, um, on some university thesis in Britain as well. They're on a system, a particular system, where you can access most of them, and they're trying to digitise the older ones. Anyway, as ever with this sort of stuff, there's going to be a load of front matter where it's going to be division that blah, 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 abstracts. Let's find the abstract and get past all this, this waffle. Um... This is standard waffle you find on dissertations and theses. It's not all that different than much of what you'd find in, on a British one. Abstract, Claudine Gay taking charge, black electoral success and the redefinition of American politics. In the 32 years since the passage of the 1965 Voting Rights Act, the number of black elected officials in the United States has skyrocketed to nearly 8,000. Including more than 400 black state judges, states, more than 300 black mayors and 37 black members of Congress. This book weighs the political significance of black electoral success, focusing on the most prominent class of black office holders, black members of Congress. Looking past the policy at activism of legislators, this book examines instead the impact of black congressional representation on the political behavior and attitudes of constituents. Using both aggregate and survey data, I demonstrate that the presence of black congressional representatives has reshaped the contours of mass politics. As a bridge constituting, connecting constituents of the political world, Black congressmen have altered the substance of politics by changing the face of the participant community. Black congressional representation where exists has precipitated a decline in white political engagement, as well as a realignment in the partisan preferences of white Americans who remain political activists. It has reinforced the partisan profile of black Americans while not decisively influencing their levels of engagement. The behavioural response of constituents to black congressional representation is part of function of black electoral styles. Black congressmen who eschew provocative rhetoric and embrace lotion building can stem the tide of white political defection. Furthermore, such broad appeals do not compromise their ability to inspire black political engagement. The behavioural response of constituents also reflects racial differences in the ability of minority political Leadership For white Americans, minority office holding has jeopardized the quality of the representational experience, casting doubt on the utility of political involvement. For black constituents, minority office holding has promoted more favorable impressions of the political landscape, as evidenced by their expressed opinions and attitudes. Whites and Africans can, African Americans can be in the same environment in two different worlds. Where African Americans enjoy political prominence, race becomes the primary lens through which Blacks and whites alike interpret and experience politics. The end result is an electorate polarizing attitudes and political preferences and in political involvement. These sort of abstracts are, are very common at the start of these sort of work. That's a fairly long one, I must say. Normally they try and um, make you get it down to a page, even at the, you know, as be as snappy as possible. I suppose it's not, in fairness, gigantically long, page and a, page and a bit. Um, then you have a chapter layout, as you do with these things, all, and she's done some appendixes. Um, probably, probably if we had those available, it would be full of data curves and stuff like that. And she's done her references at the end. Um, let's see how she's laid it out as we go. Well, these preview that thing saying preview is beginning to get on my nerves. Page of acknowledgments. Um, Double version of the abstract. I imagine that's a rule of the university or something. An outline with chapter breakdowns.
nice big bl- bloody oh that's a chunky wood or footnote um, um not all universities would love this model of doing a footnote um that's what's called a discursive footnote this i suppose you may have to do it considering her discipline but these kind of discursive footnotes are, tend to be discouraged her somewhat Just to do a literature review and everything else. As you can see, far from the assumption that she's a diversity hire, she'd ha- she's quite capable of doing the work to have earned the thesis. And the people going on them, she's a diversity hire. Bet she wrote two words and that's all. Uh, it was handed out to her like sweeties. Really would do themselves a great favour by shutting up, putting their brains on and engaging them before they speak. <laughs>